Welcome back to another episode of the Behind the Counter Show. Today we are here with Dr. Jag Desai in Lyndhurst, New Jersey at Core Medical and Wellness. And Dr. Desai also has offices in Aberdeen, New Jersey and in Clifton, New Jersey as well. And Dr. Desai specializes in pain, regenerative sports medication and of course men's health as well. Uh, so thanks for letting us be here today, Doc. And today we're talking all about men's health. And uh, John, the man, the myth, the legend, my father, John Bellini, compounded a pharmacist uh, here as well. And we're talking about menopause specifically, which always I, I giggled at when I put that in there. But I think it's an important issue to discuss. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as we were just talking about as well, it's, it's I don't know what it is, but it seems like we don't talk about men and hormone health and getting older and that kind of stuff. And why do you think that is, doctor, that it's less of a or increasing now, but over time wasn't um, as talked about. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Like I, I think um, I, obviously I don't have an, uh, the exact answer as to why it is, but I, I agree that there's it's something that's not as out there as menopause is. For example, with women, you know, um, perhaps because men don't talk to each other about it as often. Sure. Um, either from a comfort level, maybe or, a macho kind of thing. Exactly. Or, yeah. yeah, and it could be something like that. Um, it could be that you know, in general, men shy away from going to physicians and, and speaking to pharmacists and and getting you know health information. Uh, more often than not, it seems like they're likely to shrug something off versus you know investigate it a little bit. That's further. a very fair point. Absolutely. Sure. So then it's not just, you know, you turn 50 and go try to buy a Porsche or something like that. There's a, what are some of the actual symptoms or signs that men might see as they age hormonally? Sure. Well, a midlife crisis is certainly one of them, <laughs> if not at the top. But, um, you know, changes in um, energy level, uh, increased fatigue, um, changes in strength um, can be signs of hormonal changes. Uh, changes in mood, appetite can also reflect uh, changes of uh, hormonal uh, uh, imbalance or show signs of hormonal imbalances. Um, aesthetic changes, if you notice more sagging of facial uh, expressions, changes in hair, muscle tone, these can all play uh, or show signs of, of hormonal changes. Gotcha. And I've heard you talk about this before too, and doctor, when we've talked before as well, um, aging optimally. Is a, is a thing, right? So what, I mean, obviously we're all aging, right? But we want to try to do so as, as functionally and healthily as possible. So what does that look like for men then in terms of aging optimally through some of these challenges? You know, so, yeah, I mean, absolutely. If you, you know, ask uh, 100 guys, 99.9 uh, .9 out of 100 will say, yeah, I want to age gracefully. I want to keep doing sure. what I want to do and, and enjoy the things that I enjoy. And I think that's the definition of aging gracefully is, you know, continue to be able to participate in things that are important to you as an individual. Um, and so that, you know, that varies, you know, it could be anywhere from continuing to play sports and participate in athletic activities. It can be continuing to be able to, uh, you know, participate in music, theater, art, some of those activities, or just showing up for work and, and making a living, you know, and being able to provide for your family and yourself. Those are all uh, parts of aging gracefully. So how then do you help uh, your patients do that sort of stuff or what do you recommend in that sense? So I think, you know, for myself and in my practice, it's about um, maintaining health and wellness and maintaining function. Um, so obviously, you know, maintaining a good blood pressure, maintaining a good blood sugar level, uh, making sure your thyroid and, and your other hormones are in balance and as optimal as, uh, as possible. Um, a lot of times, you know, men don't talk about it, but they'll go through changes in their testosterone levels, just like women will go through changes in their estrogen and progesterone levels when they go through menopause. Sure. Right. That's, uh, that's exactly what we're talking about, the difference. Now, years ago, people would always talk about hormone replacement for women, and there has been hormone replacement for many, many years um, and uh, for women, but it's more recent times that they've come up with different types of gels, pharmaceutical companies have come up with things because they do realize that men as they're aging are losing uh, their uh, testosterone and the t levels are decreasing. And then th that has a whole nother uh, significant amount of um, implications because then you're not able to age op optimally because you're, you have less energy, you're not able to have, uh, uh, do the things that you would still want to be able to do. And it's not about overdoing it. Again, whenever we're talking about 
you know, hormone replacement, whether it's for, um, uh, we're talking and focusing on men's health here, but in general, you're only trying to get back to a normal level. You're, you're looking at levels, and, and a doctor here will always take levels, uh, uh, blood levels, serum levels. Sometimes they also use saliva levels to measure things, and you want to make sure you get the person back up to a normal level. You have to be careful not to overdo it, but, but that's why you're coming to a specialist like Dr. Desai who's focusing on um, those types of things. So well, let's, let's talk about that a little bit. So when I hear testosterone therapy or replacement, I probably could brand it on their part, but I usually think about Frank Thomas or some commercials <laughs> like that. Or I think about, you know, at the gym, some guy with a needle testosterone, like you think steroids, right? Or just muscle building. So why might you recommend testosterone therapy or what types of testosterone therapies are out there? What does that look like? Yeah, no, that's a good question. And, and, and John brought up a very good point. You know, we're not trying to make um, incredible hulks out there. Right. You know, that's, that's important that's to understand. That's where you get important. the side effects and people yeah. end up getting very sick. And you see all the, the different people in the stories you hear about athletes breaking Absolutely. down. So yeah. you don't so want to go there. Absolutely. I'm glad you brought that up because that, that's a very, very important aspect of aging gracefully and maintaining optimal hormone levels versus, you know, being um, uh, artificial as to the reasons why you're taking it. So, you know, with regards to, for example, testosterone itself, you know, men go through uh, andropause just like women go through menopause. And, and usually what happens, and when you look at the data, you know, when you start getting into your mid-30s, the levels start to drop. And um, as they drop, you'll start to see changes in, uh, in your body. Uh, they can cha those changes can vary from, obviously, energy um, uh, and strength to uh, the decreased ability to recover from injury. Um, you'll feel more stiffness, your collagen, your uh, uh, elasticity will start to decrease. You'll have more scar tissue, more inflammation, and all these things will start to build up throughout the course of time, and, and, and that's essentially aging. So when would you recommend, I guess, all in there, right? There are, you know, natural ways you can increase testosterone, exercise among them, or that kind of stuff. So when would you say, and obviously it's going to vary person to person, but when do you think that would cross the line between, hey, like maybe try exercising more, change your diet, that kind of stuff over, okay, maybe we should consider some actual medication and therapy in that sense. Yeah, so I think, you know, at least in my practice, testosterone is never used just by itself. Hmm. It's always used as part of a protocol, multimodal treatment regimen that includes exercise, that includes nutrient optimization um, and a healthy lifestyle. Um, and then testosterone can be used if there's a, a, a medically justifiable reason to give so. So, for example, we'll always check levels. We'll see where you're coming at, you know, naturally on your own. We'll see the effects of exercise and nutrient optimization and see what, you know, where you come in after you've, you know, incorporated some of those um, uh, components into your lifestyle. And then based upon where you are at that point, then we can see if there's a role for testosterone optimization. Gotcha. And is there anything, we, we did a similar video on the women's side of things about hormone replacement therapy sure. and that kind of stuff. So is there anything when it comes to testosterone that you should keep in mind when it comes to, you know, compounding and trying to do something a little more specific to a patient versus maybe what's commercially available? Like when do you differentiate between those two things? Uh, yeah, so, you know, there are definitely different ways you can take testosterone, and there are different ingredients that are used in different types of testosterone. You know, you have your commercially available synthetic testosterones, um, and then you have your compounded, more naturally-based testosterones. Um, you know, as to which one, you know, is, the, is right for you individually varies on certain, you know, factors. You know, what's important to you lifestyle-wise, what your perhaps ethical and, and religious you know, views are sure. on certain things. Um, so it's hard to say you need one versus the other without understanding the whole picture. Um, yeah, but yeah. that being said, you know, I, I do feel there's a you know, significant you know, benefit for some of the more natural compounded formulations. Um, I think overall you see more uh, optimal levels and, and and less um, side effects in, in my overall experience. 
what are some of those side effects, like from your perspective when patients you've seen or even from, you know, making some of those uh, things yourself for patients? Have, like, what are those side effects that people should be aware of or, you know, concerned with or monitor? You know, obviously the, you know, we talked about the Incredible Hulk thing, like is that if you're taking that, all of a sudden are you going to turn into that and have joint issues or that kind of stuff? Or, you know, what are, what are some of those things we should be aware of? Yeah, so, you know, typical side effects can be anything from superficial changes to your skin complexion, oiliness, dryness, versus uh, thinning of hair or um, hair pattern changes. Um, there can be mood changes. Um, you know, you, you, sometimes people can get a little bit more aggressive if mm. they take too much of it um, or if they have more peaks and valleys in their regimen. Um, so, you know, it depends upon the dosing and, and how often and how frequent you take it. And those are all things that either your healthcare provider or uh, your uh, pharmacist can help you with. Um, and it's important to take it properly because you want to avoid some of those changes. You know, longer term, some of the things that you want to obviously monitor are your prostate size, uh, your blood counts, um, uh, because some of those things you, you want to just monitor and make sure they stay within the normal range. Because like John alluded to earlier, it's not about becoming, you know, the Incredible Hulk. It's about main, being as optimal as possible for your age and for your quality of life. And I think that's the goal. Yeah, and it always has to be, as, as doctor said earlier, combined with eating healthy, you know, eating clean, as they say now, too, doing some level of exercise. And again, it doesn't mean you have to be, be bench pressing things and all these other stuff. You know, walking and, you know, um, some very simple exercises uh, that you can do in your house. These days people can't get to the gym. It, it's, uh, it's, you don't have to do a lot, but just the whole, it has to be a whole, you know, um, balance of all of those things together. And, and the medicine is, you know, just one component of that. And that shouldn't be the focus of it because if that is and, and people are using it, that's when you run into trouble. You have the, the levels that are too high. Maybe then you have some side effects and you can have other uh, you know, if it's really high, you have other really much more serious side effects. You know, you see some of the things that have happened to some of the professional athletes that sure, have, have sure. used things and prone to severe injuries. And some people have even, you know, the, it's even worse, you know, um, cancer. Yeah, and I, I tell, like, like John was saying, like I, I, you know, a patient will come in and say, Doc, you know, I'm still having some symptoms. I think I need to go up on my dose. And before doing that, uh, you know, you might want to just take a day off, rest, get a good night's sleep. Yeah. You know, and get that. That's the truth. You're really right. Yeah, get that. that optimized before you, you know, go up on your dose. It's not always about going up on your dose um, to see optimal function. Sure, and sleep too. I mean, people. Huge. Yeah, don't realize how much that actually can yeah. impact your hormone levels. Absolutely. Kind of oh yeah, the uh, you know the circadian rhythm and your sleep cycle plays a critical role in all your hormones and and you know and how that affects blood pressure and blood sugars and overall function. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's a great point to bring up too. We talk about, you know, finding the root cause and that kind of stuff. Like, yes, these things are good and can be helpful, but you know, you want to make sure you're not treating the symptoms. Ultimately, if you're still not sleeping, that problem's not going to go away then, right? Correct. Yeah. So, now you mentioned side effects too and pat hair pattern changes. I haven't been able to connect a beard on my face yet <laughs> at all and I'm 30 years old and feel like I haven't hit puberty. Would that help me in that sense that I'll be able to Oh, uh, probably not <laughs> at the doses no. that I prescribe. <laughs> <laughs> So funny. you look great. So thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. <laughs> but, but there's a lot of different ways too that you can supplement. I mean, we've talked about uh, uh, with Doctor Two uh, at other times. With uh, you know, sometimes people benefit from an injection because they just want to do uh, like a once a week thing or you know once every other week thing. And then some people want to do there's commercially available uh, creams and gels. Um, and uh, sometimes with those things, though, some of the problems with those are that they're not always covered. They can be very pricey. And then there are, you know, compounded um, uh, alternatives that I think are, uh, you know, especially with some of the new bases that we have out that, it, you know, get levels that are, you know, absorption levels. We have data now that shows that those, the, the um, absorption levels are such that, it, you know, you're getting, you know, almost the same thing as if you were going to get an injection, but not without the side effects, without the side effects of them. So, you know, all all, the, all our uh, options. It's always to me when we're looking at all these types of things, and, and I think Doctor is on the same page with us on this. You know, you have to work closely. The doctor, the pharmacist, and the patient work closely together. 
to make sure that you know they're doing what's best for that individual. There's never one. I'm sure that whenever somebody comes into your office, it's never just one size fits all thing. You look at the person, you're looking at the levels, you're looking at what's the best thing for that person with their lifestyle, making sure that they're adding in all the other components we've talked about. And then, you know, if you're finding a pharmacist and you do think that they need compounding, you go, you make sure you get a, a reputable compounding pharmacy, you know, and, you know, one of the ways you can find that is like, for example, PCCA, which is a Professional Compounding Centers of America, has a website. And uh, you can put in uh, your zip code, and it's pccrx.com. You can add in your zip code, and you can find some of the people that are uh, in that members of that national association, and you can find people in your area so that they can work closely with your doctor to make sure that they uh, properly compound uh, whatever that uh, it seems to be suitable for you. So yeah, that's a great website. It's a it's a really good resource for information, and um, it can help you find. Um, a reputable, um, knowledgeable uh, pharmacist, and I highly recommend that website. Gotcha. So actually, that's kind of related to what I was going to ask next. What would you know? What's the next step, right? Like if if someone is listening to this at home, and you know, we talked about this in the beginning. Sometimes you know, you can be a little self conscious or not want to, you know, admit to yourself that you know things may not be right or you're slowing down and that kind of stuff, right? So, what would you uh, encourage someone to do as a next step? Um, I think you know. What I would recommend, and I and I tell patients all the time, is, you know, get comfortable with the fact that every day we're a day older, and once you accept that and say, okay, how can, what can I do to optimize myself today and and, and get ready for tomorrow, um, you know, and and think about it for a while. And then when you're ready, come in and speak to your healthcare provider, whether it be your physician or your pharmacist, whoever you have a you know good relationship with, um, and, and start a discussion. And once you start that discussion you'll be um, able to get some ideas as to what you want to include into your lifestyle, um, and both activity-wise and, and nutrition-wise, sleep-wise, um, and medication and, and optimization-wise, and, and then you can come up with a plan. I think, too, that for everybody that's out here joining us today, uh, listening, I don't think you can really um, emphasize enough how much it, it's important to accept and, and understand that, like the doctor says, that we, we are getting older, and you shouldn't feel that there's a stigma in this kind of thing. It's normal. We're all getting older, but you can fight it. You shouldn't feel funny or you know awkward about it because it, you know we're all healthcare professionals. We're here to help you, and it, we can we can help. And, we, and if you come in and talk to the doctor, or if you come and talk to us, uh, or another uh, reputable compounding pharmacy, we can offer you suggestions. And if you're a, a, a spouse or a partner listening to, sometimes encu encouraging, uh, getting some encouragement uh, from the, the partner will also help uh, because sometimes it's tough to reconcile that and then just say, okay, you know what? I think I want to do something about it. It isn't a big deal. There's a lot of people talking about it and I could use some help. And so why don't I just go ahead and take that step and make that call and go see that doctor that can help me. Yeah, that, that's a really good point, John, is that sometimes it's not you that recognize the changes. It's the significant other person in your life that recognizes it and may encourage you to, you know, to get more um, information on it or get some help on it. And, and, and you should listen to them. And, 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 Absolutely. and perhaps, you know, begin a discussion yeah. with somebody. Absolutely. Yeah, just have a conversation, you know, yeah. and then you decide from what's right from there. Yeah. As uh, as Pauli Walnuts would say, it's one of those stigmatas. Right? Stigmata. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's 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 something that you know I, I agree with both of what you were saying there, and the spouse point was a great point too. It's you know once you accept it and recognize it, that's when you can actually start to take actionable change and try to improve the quality of your life and be there for your family and all that other kind of stuff too. Yeah, right. Um, I mean, it's not. It's like it, it just just to add quickly to that if if you if you had a problem and you you twisted your ankle, you'd go get an X-ray, right? Or you know, and if you had maybe a little elevated cholesterol medicine, you may go to the doctor and start treating the lipid levels. So you really shouldn't look at this as any differently. You shouldn't look at this any differently than these other types of problems. It's just another thing that you just need to address. It's not a, a, a big deal. It just needs to be addressed. If you do it properly and you go to the right people, you're going to get taken care of and, and things will be better. Sure. You do it safely. Makes sense. Yeah. No, safely for sure. Is there uh, anything else you wanted to add, doctor, as we wrap up here? Um... I mean, I think the most important thing is, like John was saying, is you know just start the discussion. I think, um, you know, I'll speak for myself, not just as a physician, but as you know, as a person that's getting older day by day, right? And and that's that. 
once I made the decision for myself, okay, you know, forget about the patient for a second, look at yourself and your own health. Um, and once I did that, you know, I made the decision to start some type of optimization program. So um, not only am I a physician, but I'm also, you know, a patient yeah. for myself. And then, and, uh, and, and I practice, in the, you know, for myself what I preach to my patients. So it's important and it makes a difference. Cool. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's really a good insightful. message. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Desai, for having us here again today, and uh, John, for your comments as well. And sure. uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much.